hey, we're still looking at pre-conference Bible studies for the For You Conference. And we are asked in one of them, why does the Father send his Son for you? Why does the Son humble himself, setting aside the glory of his throne in heaven for you? And you could kind of just say, you know, John 3, 16, he loves me, but there's actually more. We're also given Ephesians chapter 3, verses 18 and 19. It reads that you being rooted and grounded in love may have the strength or the ability to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and length and height and depth and to know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. See, there's, there's actually kind of a confession in that, that just singing Jesus loves me, this I know doesn't actually really take the stench out of living in the valley of the shadow of death. I don't actually have the ability to comprehend how much God loves me while he lets me live down here in all this misery and suffering. If I want to see how much God loves me, I gotta stop looking at my own misery and suffering and start looking at his. I have to be rooted and grounded in love, not just the idea of like a wholesome family moments where, uh, Everybody just gets along and we all learn an important life lesson that the real issue was the, the friendship we had along the way, like all the old TV shows. It's actually the opposite. The, the real love looks like a son cut off from his father, suffering and alone, sacrificed for everyone who hates him and belittles him, hung in shame to be laughed at, crucified in agony for those who only measure God by comfort of not wanting things. And a son who did that for us willingly, for you willingly. We measure God's love for us by the cross because everything else is going to come up short. You will never have the strength or the ability to comprehend God's love for you apart from the cross of Christ. God doesn't love you by giving you everything that you want. He loves you by losing everything that he has to save you. He sets aside the glory of the throne so that when you are buried under the frustrations of looking for God's love in a world that hurts, you could look at a cross and know that he wants to do more than just give you a second chance to not mess up the world. Because honestly, that's what most of our wants to be free from suffering really are. We want like a do-over for all of humanity, which is every bit as doomed to fail as the first one. Because the issue wasn't that something went wrong. The issue was that we sinned. So instead, he dies on the cross to forgive sinners. To forgive Adam. To forgive you. To forgive me. To forgive all. To give salvation and freedom from ever having to carry this world on your own shoulders. He shows you what love looks like, a cross, that you would know that that love is for you. Thanks for watching us talk at you. If you want to see us talk at you some more, subscribe to see notifications when we talk at you the next time. Donate to support Higher Things at higherthings.org slash giving. Help us to help you. And if you like this video, check out our website at higherthings.org and check out more content from Higher Things.